She was a sweet, pretty, innocent kid from South Carolina, but she lusted for the big time. She wanted to be a model, make money and meet millionaires. Well, she found it all, and she found more. She found murder. Tonight, an exclusive interview from an Italian jail from an American girl who couldn't say no. When she walked into uh, San Vittore prison, there were streamers hanging from some of the cells saying, Eviva Terry. Francesco's dead because of me. I have blood on my hands I can never wash away. Certainly, if I didn't end up in prison, I would be dead. Faye Yeager is rich, good-looking, and her ex-husband is on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. Today, Faye is putting women and children on board her Underground Railroad, defying the law, and offering an escape from what they claim is hell at home. You don't know what it is to stand there and have a doctor tell you that your child has been molested. I'm just real vigilante. I, I'm perfectly willing to break the law and defy any judge that I think has erred in, in making a decision on child's welfare. They were one of the most respected families in northern Montana. They are grandparents, and they say all they were trying to do was save their family farm. But now they're locked behind bars, convicted felons, and the town where they committed their crime is outraged and bitter and crying for vengeance. Some of them did feel like they should be hung from a tree. Dick, you mean to tell me that your banker suggested that you grow pot to pay off a $2 million debt you owed the bank? That's right. Terry Broom was a beautiful kid from South Carolina, the all-American girl. Then a blind ambition. She wanted to become a model, make money, and meet millionaires. She found it all in the fashion capital of the world, Milan. She also found something else, wild sex parties and cocaine. Then she met one millionaire too many. It was a heck of a party, right up until the time she put a bullet in his head. For Terry Broom, the party's over. Sorry. They are the exotic thoroughbred queens of fashion in the capital of fashion, Milan, the frenetic money machine of Italy where elegance is the most important reason for existing. They earn fortunes and are courted like royalty. The sunspots of Italy are their playgrounds. But for every fashion queen in Milan, there are the pretenders to the thrones. The models who never make it to the center runway. Girls like the one time fresh, naive, beautiful Terry Broom. A casualty in the big buck beauty business. The ones who get caught up in a swirl of playboys, bright lights, orgies, and cocaine. No hate, no fight, just excitation. All through the night, it's a sad. The first time you try uh, a cocaine is um, it's, it's a good experience. It's a, it's a different experience because it gives you a insuperable uh, energy. Uh, insuperable, uh, it gives you extra energy and you just feel on top of the world. You feel like you can conquer the world. You, have, you go from place to place and uh, you never tire. You, ne you don't need to sleep. You don't need to eat, which is great for, uh, for a, a model. Terry Broom was a sweet kid from Greenville, South Carolina. She came to New York to break into modeling, and there she first met the Italian connection of Playboys, a special breed of transatlantic party princes, millionaires like Carlo Cabassi, men who dive into a ritual dance to see who can get the youngest and the prettiest. I think maybe the, the new models that come in, the, the Playboys are there to see who can get them first and who have them on the arm, and that way the, it's almost like a game for, uh, between them. It's pretty sickening, but it's sort of like a meat market. And, um, and you're only possession, you're, you won't last for a month. Today, the bright lights, the villas, the elegant addresses that Terry lusted for have eluded her, perhaps forever. Home for Terry is this prison outside Bergamo, Northern Italy. 
she is serving 14 years in jail for the murder of Carlo Cabassi's playboy friend, Francesco D'Alessio. She was convicted four years ago in one of the most sensational murder trials in Italian history, a trial that laid bare the dolce vita of Milan's rich and famous, who lived by the rule of live fast, die young, and have a good-looking corpse. Anthony Sugar, a top American journalist living in Milan, covered the trial and recalls the social explosion surrounding the murder. It was as if the rich playboy population was on trial, not little Terry Broom. She became a folk heroine. Um, when she walked into uh, San Vittore prison, there were streamers hanging from some of the cells saying, Eviva Terry. Um, one enthusiastic magazine editor at the time told me that he thought it'd be a good idea to give all the models P-38 pistols and organize the Broom Brigades. She was affectionately dubbed Boom Terry Boom Boom Broom. Now, is that because the middle class and the working class has this particular dislike of this playboy clack? They're not loved. They're certainly not loved. There's some, there was some immediate intuitive understanding of exactly what she had revolted against. What Terry was revolting against, in general, was her failure, like so many of the walking wounded, to make it to that glamorous runway and her plunge into drugs. And what she was revolting against, in particular, was the handsome Francesco's assumption that she was the community sexual plaything of the Playboy Battalion. Francesco, I believe, represented everything, that, that type of lifestyle, which I think it went click because I had gone to one party and then afterwards it, it went, um, then I refused Francesco in his, uh, his way because he was very arrogant com as, a, as a person. And I knew I, being a model, there is, you're, you're treated as a possession, but I, I refused to be treated as, as, a, as a, a prostitute or a whore, excuse me, but uh, I, I refused that, that, that type of treatment. Terry first met Francesca behind the walls of this exotic and sprawling villa on April 28, 1984. As soon as he saw her, he flipped out. He wanted to go to bed with him the world's worst way. She told him to go take a hike. But later that night, she would go to bed with a man. In fact, two men. And this enraged Francesco. It was a rage that would end up by putting one bullet in his heart and another in his head. I remained there that night and uh, the partying continued became more of a private type of party and um... What do you mean by private party? Private party. <laughs> You're talking about swapping partners? Yes. And you didn't care? No, I didn't care. At that, time, at that point you don't care. You don't care. If whatever goes happens, it's fine. If you it kind of follow your nose, well, whatever happens, happens. And um... But the next day, after, after this, after this weekend at this uh, villa, I had left, I'd gone to um come back into Milano, where I started hearing these stories, where I had had an orgy with the six men. In the tight-knit cafe society of Milan's Playboys, the story of the orgy with six men swept through the clubs like wildfire. Those stories were being circulated by Francesco D'Alessio, the man whose obsession with Terry Broom was fast becoming a fatal attraction. This is a picture of Terry's last night on the town in Milan. She was with her new lover, Giorgio Rotti, another playboy. They went to the Nepenta discotheque, headquarters to Milan's playboys. At Nepenta, Rotti argued with Francesco about the orgy story he was circulating. They argued. That night, Terry was drunk and coked out of her mind. Here at the Principessa Clotilde apartment house in the early hours of June 26, 1984, the stopwatch on Francesco's life started to tick. Terry Broom had come home here with her fiancé. They had a violent argument, and suddenly he broke off the engagement. Somewhere in Terry's coke-crusted brain, she blamed Francesco for the breakup. She stumbled across a boyfriend's 38 caliber Smith & Weston. Death started to streak towards Francesco like a steam train. And I was reaching up on the, on the shelf, feeling around, where I felt, when I felt the pistol, the, uh, the gun. And I knew exactly what it was at the time. Uh, and I just, uh, I felt the night, the first thought, honestly, was of Francesco. In a haze of drugs, Terry stumbled to Francesco's apartment. The pistol weighed heavily on her. 
she pressed the buzzer. He was entertaining a blonde model when she arrived. She remembers that he always called me bitch. The trio snorted cocaine. Terry mixed it with whiskey. Francesco started to taunt her about orgies. It was the same story. And he said, what do you want me to call, uh, call my friends? At that point, it was like the same story. I needed uh, to be uh, have an orgy or whatever, and that type of that type of light was, and that I didn't see um, at that point. I got extremely angry, and I remember pull, I pulled out the gun. My Francesco pulled the gun to him. When he pulled the gun, he pulled my arm. The gun went off, but it didn't seem at the time that I had shot Francesco because I I was looking right in the eyes, and I thought, oh my God, I've shot him. Three more shots rang out. One struck Francesco in the temple. The lifeblood of Italy's leading playboy ebbed away. I remember just standing up and there was the girl, the model was on the floor, on all fours, and she was saying, please don't shoot me, please don't shoot me. And I said, I just looked at her and said, no, no, you know, and I, and I left. So let me understand, you had the gun in your hand mm -hmm. and he pulled himself? He pulled, I had the gun here, he pulled here. It's like this, where he had control over my hand. The day after the murder, Italian police brought her back from Zurich, where she fled. If Francesco was mourned by his female lovers, the Italian public shed no tears. It became the hottest soap opera in Italy, with cops even taking Terry back to the scene of the crime for the press and the cameras. By the time the trial came around, about a year and a half, two years later, there was a tremendous amount of sympathy. You could hear taxi drivers sitting at their stops discussing the case and grandmothers saying, poveretta. At the trial, the drama hit a high C with the prosecution trotting out her lovers and a packed courtroom lapping up every morsel of drug and sex parties of the Playboy set which shook the beautiful people to its very foundations. Terry defending herself in court and heart-rending scenes of her mother who flew from South Carolina to be at her side. Her sister, Donna, a model who had survived the Milan scene, was there to hear the grim litany of how far Terry had sunk and a passionate defense lawyer shouting her innocence. No, signori della corte, no. Terry Broom non è un assassino. Francesco's dead because of me. I have blood on my hands I can never wash away. If I didn't end up in prison, I would be dead from the last time I had. Even the prosecutor in the trial, Marco Maiga, showed little sympathy for the victim. Frequentando modelle, tra l'altro, D'Alessio aveva... D'Alessio could have all the women he wanted. Eventually, any woman who came into the circle was promised a modeling job. But only the ones that gave into his party games would see any work, and this pretty much characterized all of the models who worked in that circle. And so Terry, to be able to work regularly, found herself giving in to the whims of these people. Eileen Ford, who owns one of America's most respected model agencies, knew Francesco D'Alessia and Terry Broom. And she also knows Milan. For the innocent, for the overanxious, for the girls who hope to achieve the impossible, Milan can be Sodom and Gomorrah. I had a five, ten per, uh, people I would be seeing it one after the other, or one night, uh, I would see one, uh, one night and that would be it. You're talking about one night stands? One night stands, yes. Fabrizio Ferri is one of Italy's leading fashion photographers. He owns the biggest studio in Italy. The heartbreak of the Terry Brooms of the world are too tragically familiar. The main problem is that uh, uh, if you have, are hit by all this, by elegance, beauty and money, all at once, and you're young, you can really lose your head because uh, you lose the perspective of what is happening and, and you use the concept, uh, the values, you know, the sort of tremble under the heat of such a powerful beauty, uh, beautiness, uh, richness, and uh, if the work doesn't go to them quickly, they become very lonely. They go back in their small room in the hotel and their rooms get smaller and smaller because their money runs out. Suddenly you receive uh, 45 roses, red roses, and you have uh, some, some guy that comes to your door with a Rolls Royce. And you say, ah, finally. And that guy say, it's, it's, a, it's a creep. So what happens? First the flowers, then the creep, 
then the parties and the cocaine. And uh, you see, it's like cocaine is so funny, but and it's so tragic at the same time. Mm, they they even convince girls to use cocaine because they say they don't get work because they're too fat, and they put them on a diet of cocaine. Right now, Terry is trying to pick up the pieces of her life. She has absorbed herself in ceramics, and when she is free, hopes to make a career out of it. And life in Bergamo prison itself is not without sympathy. On the day I visited her, she was given a furlough. She peddled out of the prison, and I took her to a small restaurant. She will be given regular furloughs until she is freed next year, having served five years of a 14-year sentence. Even the Italian prison authorities are incurable romantics. But as Terry stands as the ultimate object lesson of what can happen to a pretty young model from America, still they come. But at least some are armed with a warning. I was actually going, I was going to be given a list of people to keep away from. Beverly Johnson, an American model, has seen it all before in Milan. And they just use you. Sexually, mentally, and physically, I mean, I mean, they just use you. What would you like to tell the Terry Brooms of New York and Los Angeles and Georgia and Michigan who are coming over here? What advice can you give them? It took a tragedy for me to finally open up my eyes and see how my life went. And I, I just hope that the other, the other people who are in my situation doesn't need a tragedy such as this to take another person's life, to end up in prison. To... Terry Broom did not make it to the pinnacle to that elegant runway where there is no ugliness, no poverty, just riches and beauty. She gambled and lost in the beauty business brutal game of roulette. Today, she heads down the road of hope, leaving behind her one life wasted in a haze of drugs and another life wasted in a hail of bullets. I guess the story of Terry Broom is an object lesson to all kids who want too much too soon. Terry Broom is not your basic hardened criminal. But don't let's forget, she did take another human being's life. The secret scheme to save the farm was over. The Kurths were busted. An estimated three to five million dollars worth of high-grade marijuana was confiscated. Faye Yeager says she'll go to jail if she has to to protect children. She's the conductor of a new underground railroad, helping women and children escape the law and their alleged abuse at home. I'll have that story for you after this.